you to everyone who's joined us here this morning and I want to give a very special thanks to your college for being a gracious host for today's announcement. I'm State Senator Kristen Phillips Hill and I have the great honor of representing the 28th district right here in York County and we stand in the shadows of the former York Narrow Fabrics Company. This site once manufactured the actual red tape that bound federal regulations in Washington, D.C. Today, the federal government has paved a roadmap for us in what reducing and reining in harmful regulations can do. Our national economy is booming. The unemployment rate is at an all-time low. Companies are struggling to fill jobs, and those are great problems to have. In Pennsylvania, however, we have a tremendous opportunity but as you will hear today, our regulatory environment is holding us back from achieving our full potential. As the sponsor of several of these bills, I'm proud to have worked with employers, employees, and taxpayers to put together these common sense approaches to address our state's regulatory crisis. From implementing a one in, two out model for each regulation added, Two must be eliminated to bring greater transparency to our permitting and regulatory process. Hardworking Pennsylvanians will be better served by breaking free of the red tape that bureaucrats have placed on employers and employees all across the Commonwealth. And think about all of the regulations that our hardworking citizens deal with. Teachers who are continually burdened by new regulation after new regulation. Manufacturers are having to jump through hoops all of the time to comply with the latest changes to state and federal regulations. And employers looking to create jobs here in Pennsylvania, they're confused by the maze put in place by many state agencies that halts our economic opportunity and progress in attracting top talent and allowing hardworking men and women to keep more money in their bank accounts. Several of these bills will help provide for more accountability and a more user-friendly state government. So we are here to say collectively that Pennsylvania needs to reform its regulatory process so we can unleash the power of its employees. As many of the representatives of various groups will tell you today that their businesses and members have really had to improve their customer service to survive in today's economy. It's time that state government do the same thing and be focused on the customer. Our customers are the taxpayers and they are the people paying taxes out of their hard earned paychecks. They pay taxes when they purchase a good or service. Unfortunately, state government has grown at a steady clip over decades, tacking on new regulation after new regulation without any check and balance. This package will improve our Commonwealth's customer service. Pennsylvania needs to do its own spring cleaning, and that's what we are proposing with these reform measures today. And I'm very pleased to now turn it over to my good colleague and friend from Hanover, Representative Kate Klunk, who is championing many of these issues in the House. Thank you all for joining us here today on this beautiful spring day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and it's a perfect day to start some spring cleaning here in Pennsylvania. Like many of you, I have spent the last few weekends doing some spring cleaning of my own, uh, combing through closets, going through all of the drawers. Um, I had a pile for donating to charity, the pile for the trash, and the pile for yard sale. I went through all of those things and the trash pile was actually rather large. And there are some things that you just hold on to, like the 1990s pair of teal blue platform sandals that I've been holding on to since high school. I was able to finally throw them away and my husband is actually very, very happy. Our home is now much more tidy, efficient, and neat. Now our homes, they're not the only things here in Pennsylvania that need some spring cleaning. The Commonwealth, we have thousands and thousands of regulations here on the books. And many of these acts and regulations were created several decades ago, and they have yet to be re-examined and evaluated to gauge their level of relevance, appropriateness, and cost effectiveness. 
our Commonwealth here in Pennsylvania does not undertake a regular and systemic independent review of existing regulations, nor does it possess an organized system to provide recommendations um, and receive recommendations from the public, educators, business, government, and other entities here throughout the Commonwealth. With well over 153,000 regulations on the books, our state's regulatory system has become the equivalent of extreme hoarding. We need to call A&E and get hoarders in. Here in Pennsylvania, we don't get rid of anything. Essentially, we have a whole lot of clutter and we need a Marie Kondo type person to come in and start cleaning things up. And that is exactly what State Senator Kristen Phillips Hill and I are doing with the creation of the Independent Office of Repealer within the Independent Regulatory Review Commission in our two bills. I truly want to thank Senator Kristen Phillips Hill for drafting this legislation. She introduced this last session in the House. And since being elected to the Senate, she is championing this issue over there. She has Senate bill. 251 in, in the Senate, and I have been entrusted, thank you, Kristen, um, with House Bill 1055 this session. Now, instead of using Marie Kondo's approach of determining an item's worth based on the joy it provides to you and that emotional connection with you that you have with the item, the Office of the Repealer would take a hard analytical look at the value of any act or regulation. And nothing in this legislation states that any specific regulation must be repealed. The Office of the Repealer would adopt a quantitative and qualitative rubric to assess whether any existing statute or regulation is reasonable, unduly burdensome, detrimental to the economic well-being of our state, duplicative, onerous, defective, or in conflict with another statute or regulation. Then the Office of the Repealer would work to provide a full systemic view of existing statutes and regulations to identify those that need modification, revision, or repeal. The people of Pennsylvania would also have input in this process. There would be an online system where individual taxpayers, business owners, um, nonprofit entities could go on and say, hey, Office of the Repealer, I need you to take a look at this regulation we don't think that is working for the people of Pennsylvania. The office would provide an annual report to the General Assembly and to the governor. Now these reports would provide recommendations to us on the statutes and regulations that would need some special attention, some spring cleaning, if you will. And this would hope to aim to increase efficiency and eliminate wasteful practices in our government. In addition to reviewing existing regulations, a provision in the legislation that the Senator had talked about states that for every new regulation added to our government, that agency would be required to repeal two. Now this would greatly decrease the government interference in the lives of our citizens and businesses here in Pennsylvania. This spring cleaning approach, it's not novel, it's not new. This government governmental regulation spring cleaning approach has been used by states like Kansas, Rhode Island, Tennessee, North Carolina, and our own federal government. These restrictions on the books here in Pennsylvania, they create impediments for individuals, local and county governments, school districts, businesses of all shapes and all sizes. It limits the economic development and the growth of job creation here in our local communities. These thousands upon thousands of regulations, they have been created under both Republican and Democrat governors. They've been piling up for decades, decades and decades before many of us were even born or even thought of. They have truly left Pennsylvanians drowning in red tape, like the red tape that was manufactured in the building behind us. We truly have a responsibility to make sure that government is working for the people of Pennsylvania, not against them. The Office of the Repealer would work for the people of Pennsylvania to ensure that our rules and regulations here in this Commonwealth are not duplicative, are not inefficient, and are not unduly burdensome for the people who we represent.
I want to talk about two bills that I've introduced. Uh, one is um, this House Bill 509. It deals with permit, um, the permit paralysis that even Governor Tom Wolf recognized back in December when he said he would support a common sense uh, permit reform process. We have uh, literally hundreds of property owners, businesses, public entities like schools waiting for permits and licenses, licensee, licenses and other actions from state government which they are waiting for without any idea where they are in the process. And so just like when you order a package at Christmas from Amazon and you can track where it is in the process, we believe that you ought to be able to track where you are in the permit process. So my bill creates an online repository with every department in the state where when you apply for your permit, uh, it'll be logged in and you can see where it is in the review process. And by the way, this also allows for transparency that if you want to know what your neighbor's doing, you can check what your neighbor's doing and what permit they've applied to too. So um, this will allow the person who's applied for the permit to find out where the process is. And if it's been denied, the statutory rationale for denying or delaying the permit. Um, we know, uh, I spent my life in the private sector, my professional life in the private sector, that regulations are as bad as taxation when it comes to hindering businesses. We don't mind paying taxes if they're going for good things and we know what we're paying, but when it comes to regulations, it, it causes a, a paralysis um, and it causes uh, what, what I believe is not constructive time or productive time when you're trying to make sure that you're in compliance with the regulations. And as Representative Klunk said, over 150,000 uh, regulations in Pennsylvania, many of which are outdated and most of which are burdensome to the businesses. But regulations are good and there, there are plenty of good regulations. And if they are good, uh, we should respect the equal branches of government and those regulations should go in front of the General Assembly and the Senate to be voted into law. And so my second bill, um, 509 is the bill with uh, permit transparency. There's a, uh, a, a great senator from York County has the Senate version, uh, which is, I think is uh, Senate Bill 252. But 507 is a um, bill dealing with if, if the executive branch wants to impose new regulations and they're economically significant, then they should come to the General Assembly and have at least our committees vote on them. Uh, if, if, it's, if it's a good regulation and if it makes sense, if it protects our citizens, uh, then, then we should put it up to a vote and it would pass on its merit instead of allowing uh, some faceless, nameless bureaucrat to institute bureaucrats that, that uh, or in, in, institute regulations that hinder our businesses. So uh, we're going to vote on the permit transparency this week in the House. Uh, it also allows um, for if the, the state cannot deliver the permits in time, that they would be able to bring a third party inspector to do the, the, the issuance of the permits. Uh, you know, we use third parties when we go to have our car inspected. We use third parties when we have our children get physicals for school or their, their uh, vaccinations for school. We don't go to a state doctor for the physical. We don't go to a state garage to get our cars inspected. We use third parties all the time uh, in our lives to meet these government regulations and, and uh, this would allow the state to engage third party experts who have the same credentials, who have the same, uh, the, the, the same schooling, the same licensing, the same qualifications as the inspector at the state level uh, to use them as well. So um, I'm looking forward to, to that vote this week and, and debating and discussing that bill which passed the House last session and I've reintroduced this session. So thank you for, for uh, indulging me. This is an issue that is very near and dear to my heart. Pennsylvania has been closed for business. We're extremely hostile to businesses and to our residents when they want to try to get anything done. And, and I have a bill, it's the RAINS Act. It mirrors the federal bill. It's Regulations in Need of Scrutiny Act. Essentially, it requires that any regulation proposed by an agency that has an impact of $1 million or greater go through both the House and the Senate on a concurrent resolution before it can be implemented into code. This puts the power back into the hands of the legislative branch. And this is truly what the issue is. The issue is restoring a balance of power in the Commonwealth. And this isn't just an executive problem. 
that's not how we got here. We got here for, because for far too long, on both sides of the aisle, legislators have punted. We write these very broad laws with so many undefined terms, and then we give it to the executive and say, promulgate the law, make the rules up. It's very convenient for legislators because they're able to pass the responsibility to somebody else instead of finishing the job. We need to take responsibility to write very specific laws with very, every term defined before we send it to the executive so that they are truly just promulgating the intent of the legislative body. It goes back to Schoolhouse Rocks. The legislature, legislative branch writes the laws, the executive enforces the laws. It's that simple, it truly is. Because every time that our branch passes the buck, we strip the voters of their voice. Because the voters don't get to choose who that unelected, unaccountable bureaucrat is. They have no recourse for action. Each time that we do that, we need to restore this balance of power. This is a good first step. I think this is a great package of legislation that we have to try to rein in this gauntlet of regulation to help all of our businesses, our communities, um, get through this regulatory gauntlet. As we're dealing with permits, as my colleague Ro Representative Rothman said, um, it is every facet of, of our communities, from, the, from our churches to our municipalities to our businesses. We're all impacted by this. And it shouldn't be this difficult to get through a permitting process, especially when we've already paid an engineer to uh, d draft or submit an application. Why do I have to wait for another engineer? PennDOT, if you sp speak to anybody there right now, our projects are taking two to three years on top of the general construction because we're waiting for permits. One agency dealing with another agency, often just to replace a pipe with the exact same pipe, but we still gotta wait for a permit. There needs to be some common sense approaches taken. I think this package of legislation that we have proposed and the bicameral effort should help us get this to the finish line this year. So I, I thank you all for joining us today and um, taking the time to listen. I'm here, uh, as Kristen sort of alluded to, a little less in my role as a new state representative and more uh, to talk about my former uh, business experience. I had the great honor of uh, working for 23 years and uh, at St. Ange Company, which is one of the, the best kept secrets here in York. I had the, the, the uh, privilege of leading that company for 11 years. And um, in addition to that experience, um, what's quite relevant is, believe it or not, St. Ange is one of the leading firms in the world at helping many of the, the, uh, the largest and best companies across the country and around the globe determine where they're gonna locate uh, manufacturing facilities, distribution facilities. And so I know firsthand what these companies are looking for when they, when they pick a location. And so I'm gonna start with a little bit of good news and that is that York does a lot of things right. Um, we, as, as you'll hear later on, our, our folks, uh, Kevin Schreiber and his folks at the York County Economic Alliance are doing a lot of good work. We have a rich manufacturing tradition here uh, York has about 20% manufacturing jobs, which is more than twice uh, the state average. We have a lot of great entrepreneurs, a lot of great legacy and tradition here. Unfortunately, a lot of the issues that we are struggling with are state level issues. Um, and as my colleagues have alluded to, while the nation has done extremely well under new leadership the past two years, which included a lot of regulatory reform, uh, we rank, uh, according to USA Today, just put out a report last month on economic uh, quality uh, of states, we rank 39th when it comes to business friendliness. Well, why is that? Okay, there's about four or five things that companies are really looking for. First and foremost is workforce. I'm proud to say that the Republican leadership in the House made that our top priority this session. We passed a number uh, of good bills just a few weeks ago, and that's a good thing. But let's keep going. Corporate net income tax, 9.99%, okay, third highest in the nation. We are an extremely litigious state. It is impossible to fathom the amount of damage that the Philadelphia trial lawyers have done to our Commonwealth and continue to do day in and day out. Lastly, the topic we're here to talk about today, permitting and regulatory issues. We are one of the most unfriendly, time-consuming states with whom to do business. A permit that might take three to six months in Virginia or Maryland can typically take a year to two years here in Pennsylvania. So as we look around and wonder why our population is aging, why our population is shrinking, 
because our children and grandchildren are leaving to seek employment elsewhere. Maybe it's because we take the first 10% of companies' profits. Maybe it's because we sue them routinely. And maybe it's because we make it as onerous and complicated as possible to permit, uh, to get through the regulatory process and to either locate here or to stay and invest here. So I just wanna say how proud I am of my colleagues. I mentioned earlier that York does a lot right. And I'm not saying this because they're my colleagues. I'm saying this as a former business person. We are blessed with a lot of great legislators here uh, in York County, as well as our friends in Cumberland. Uh, Greg Rothman has some incredible uh, business uh, experience of his own. And so I just wanna commend Kristen, Kate, Dawn, and Greg, uh, and uh, thank them for their efforts. I'm gonna co-sponsor and support them any way I can and just say that I'm very proud to serve with them. Thank you. So after listening to my colleagues uh, speak, it's uh, it just, framed in my mind what we experience here in Pennsylvania. We are so primely positioned in the country where we have a short drive to three quarters of the, of the country's population, yet we lag way behind other states. Our taxes are too high, our, our regulations are, are onerous beyond belief. We sit idly by and watch companies like Airbus and BMW and and other huge companies settle in Kentucky and South Carolina in our border states, but they don't come to Pennsylvania. Why is that? Our taxes are too high and our re regulations are just out of control. These bills that are being introduced are gonna be so helpful to many Pennsylvanians. The governor likes to talk about the minimum wage. What about a family sustaining wage? What about a pension? What about benefits? What about health care? What about all these things are brought in when we lift this burden off of Pennsylvania and attract people, attract companies who can employ people with real jobs, real jobs that make differences in people's lives. We need to make this state a business friendly state, which it clearly is not. This very thoughtful legislation, which has been drafted by my colleagues who do such a wonderful job in the House of Representatives will make an impact will bring business, growth, jobs, industry into the state that lags behind in every category. This is smart, common sense legislation. The governor needs to get on board. We need to put people to work in this state. And I thank my great colleagues and great friends for the hard work they're doing. And I look very much forward to being supportive. Thank you very much. As a researcher of regulation, I must say it's quite fun to be here at the birthplace where red tape first got its name. Pennsylvania actually has a fairly modern and sophisticated regulatory system in many respects, especially when it comes to review of new regulations. But Pennsylvania needs a more effective process for reviewing all the old regulations that gradually accumulate on the state's books. In 2017, I produced an analysis of the Pennsylvania Administrative Code finding it contains about 13 million words in it, roughly 153,000 of which are restrictive terms like shall, must, or required. It would take an ordinary person about 13 weeks to read the entire Pennsylvania Administrative Code. Pennsylvania has a higher restriction count in its code than many of its neighbors, including West Virginia and even Maryland, although not quite as high as some other U.S. states like Ohio or New York. But tellingly, the average province in Canada has just 26,800 of these restrictions in its regulations. And the national government in Canada has 71,800 restrictions as of 2018. Now, there are some differences between the U.S. and Canada due to its parliamentary system. So Canada sometimes uses means other than regulation like legislation or policy documents to implement its requirements. But nonetheless, it's highly revealing that these numbers are so much lower than Pennsylvania's. Now, most jurisdictions struggle to implement a meaningful process for periodic review of regulations, and Pennsylvania is no exception. But the legislation that's being introduced today can help address this challenge. Pennsylvania should learn from other states that are also making look back at old regulations a top priority. So my home state of Virginia, for example, is implementing bipartisan regulatory reduction 
uh, reform right now that marries occupational licensing and criminal justice reforms with broader regulatory process reforms. Uh, agencies in Virginia are developing a catalog of all their rules and requirements that they'll have to report publicly, and several agencies are going to have to cut their requirements by 25 percent over the next several years. So it's not surprising that CNBC recently named Virginia one of the top states for business, citing its regulatory reduction program as a reason for Virginia's strong place in the rankings. Pennsylvania has the potential to be the next leader in the fight against red tape. So today I'm very excited to see legislators making meaningful regulatory reform a top priority. As much of what was said, really, and I think the message today uh, to take away is the private sector really is the muscle behind our economy. It's the economic engine that, that really fuels a lot of the growth throughout our Commonwealth and our country. And it really is incumbent on government to help set the conditions by which our private sector can thrive, our businesses, our individuals can get up, get their business up and running, uh, grow their business and be successful, whether you're a large corporation or you're an independent entrepreneur. Uh, we stand in the shadow of industry here. We stand uh, in front of an edifice of education, both of which really fueling our economy in York County and throughout Pennsylvania. And as was stated, Pennsylvania really does have a very diverse uh, economy, a very strong economy, and York County is certainly a microcosm of just that. As Representative Jones had mentioned some of, some of this, uh, York County is the eighth largest county in Pennsylvania. Uh, we do have a very diverse industry makeup. Our gross domestic product just from York County alone is $16 billion. And manufacturing alone, as noted, comprises about 20% of that economic output, as well as just shy of 20% of the labor force. And right now in York County, unemployment is at a historic low of 3.4%. So really to sustain and evolve a modern economy, we do need a modernized and streamlined and economically empowering government. And the, the phrase, in order to form a more perfect union, is it set in the preamble of our very own constitution. And we really should all be in the business of perpetual improvement and retooling government and looking at what works and what doesn't work and trying to address that is good continual practice. In a recent survey of your county businesses, 81% of respondents voted in favor of officials placing focus on streamlining processes and promoting efficiency in regulations and taxes and the state budgeting process. Today is an example of just that and really do want to commend all of the members of York County, Cumberland County delegation uh, behind us today for this bicameral effort and really thank you to Senator Phillips Hill uh, for hosting this today and bringing all of us together for this common cause.